Roman cavalry fort. Um, it's all fields now, but I'll show you some of the interesting, uh, some of the interesting places, and we've got some nice views here too. Um, just as we're as we're passing by, we've got some nice views. Um, looking up the Tweed Valley, like that. Oh, Grace. So, Trimontium, uh, the fort of the Three Hills. We've seen the Eildon Hills many times on my... No sound! No sound? Hang on, let me flick you around, see if that works, see if that improves the sound. Have we got sound? Tell me, tell me, do it's you. Okay, right, it was you. Right. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> So, we've seen the Eildons many times. There's one of them, the North Eildon. But um, there are three. Two of them are hiding. So, Trimontium literally means place of three hills. And the Romans came here not long after they, uh, they invaded uh, Britannia and Caledonia. Well, tried to invade Caledonia. Um, Caesar came here in the early first century and pretty quickly um, in uh, in 79 AD hello Pablo it's another of my history ones um, in 79 AD the uh, well Agricola came here Emperor Agricola and he uh, he started to build Trimontium which lasted for a couple hundred years so this is a modern stone here by the way uh, 1928 Hard to believe Italy invaded Britain, but there it is. Hello, Emmy. Hello, Paul. Hello, Chris, everyone. Here once stood the fort of Trimontium, built by the troops of Agricola in the first century AD, abandoned at least twice, possibly up to four times, by the Romans, and ultimately lost by them after fully 100 years of frontier warfare. So they, um, they fought against the, the Votadini in the Selgavi, who I've told you about before. Um, the local tribes here and as we walk down we'll walk down to the uh, the amphitheater and a little bit further so at this field here or these fields this is an aerial view of the fields and you can see here in the light lines the lighter lines you can see two kind of big playing card uh shaped objects here hello peter Thank you, Paul. Hello, Altan. Um, so, yeah, so these are the, the outside lines of the fort, uh, possibly a little bit further across the, the modern road there. And within, you can see the streets. Um, so the, the, the Roman fort has a, dis a very distinctive uh, shape there. Uh, ah, there it is the, the playing card shape of the fort. Of the fort is revealed by crop marks taken by aerial photos. So yeah, when it gets very dry during summer, you can sometimes still see the outline of the fort. Um, so we are here, and this is the area of the fort. Uh, down there is the amphitheater, and we'll go up to the uh, the railway bridge and get a good view of it there. Um, so here's the timeline. So it starts off uh, before 2000 BC. Um, there you go, thank you. Before 2000 BC, the Votadini were here. Now the Votadini, um, they were the people living in, or one of the peoples living in uh, South Scotland, um, the Celtic Iron Age tribe who lived here for at least 2,000 years before the Romans came. And they had, uh, the, the Votadini, the Selgavi, they had a number of, we'll walk down this way, they had a number of, um, well, they, they, they owned the entire land, essentially. Um, and they had here at, uh, at the Eildons, and in Edinburgh, and at Traffray and Law, which is uh, another beautiful, similar place. They had these strongholds of uh, towns, um, towns and forts, and um, there's uh, huge amounts of archaeological evidence and hordes of treasure that have been found, um, detailing the uh, the history of the, the the Celtic people who are here. But along came the Romans, Julius Caesar and Agricola, 
uh, in 79 AD. And there was Hadrian's Wall built. And above that, so Hadrian's Wall is roughly where the border between England and Scotland is now, a little bit far into England. Uh, and then above that, uh, cutting Scotland in half, um, between the Edinburgh and Glasgow roughly, is um, uh, the Antonine Wall as well. Now, Hadrian's Wall is very much still standing. I can go there another time and show you Hadrian's Wall. It's, it's an amazing, amazing place because um, it's a, a stone wall. But the Antonine Wall uh, was wood, just like the, the fort here would have been wood. Um, <laughs> it's good to know. Um, yes, yeah, so um, the, the Roman army came here and tried, did its best, to, uh, to, to subjugate Scotland, but they never really managed it. There's different theories as to why they, they conquered England very well, but they didn't conquer Scotland. They came up here, and for, you know, a hundred years or so, they, they were here and they tried to, to subjugate the locals, but it may be that they'd actually, well, there may be a couple of reasons, they may have failed, um, they may have been pushed back, quite possibly, or they might not have wanted to invade uh, uh, Caledonia or Scotland, perhaps. Um, but we do know, uh, it's, it's fairly certain, um, we do know that they did uh, trade with the, with the locals, with the, the tribes here, because in the in the, the, the Votadine and the Selgave forts, we have uh, good evidence of Roman artifacts, Roman jewellery and coins and so on. Um, so there was some sort of a, a trade that went on. So whether they thought the trade was um, too valuable or whether they failed to conquer, who knows. Um, but here, here, just over the fence here, is an amphitheatre which is this circular depression in this field. Too cold, wet and windy for Romans, for, for Italians, you think, they, they couldn't stand it, that's possible. So you see this circular kind of bowl shape here. Um, this is an amphitheatre. So the Romans would come here and they would view the, the gladiators or the wrestling or maybe speeches when uh, when an emperor came here or a general he, you know he might give a speech here and it's possible that there's up to about 3,000 people um, within this uh, within this uh, the, the amphitheater so a very important to the morale of any army and um, this is a cavalry fort so um, you know an army fort obviously with perhaps up to 10,000 people living here. The, uh, the soldiers and their associated hangers-on. And very important that they would have some entertainment. Especially if, um, as Richard says, if they're cold and they're cold and wet and they, they have to guard the wall, guard the road. Um, that's not an aqueduct. That's not a Roman aqueduct. That no, that's that's fairly modern. That's a couple hundred years old. That viaduct. Uh, so ignore that. That's not part of this this Roman. Uh, not part of the Roman history. Um, but it it is actually on the line of the Roman road that goes up from York to uh, to the Firth of Forth. So that, that there would have been a, a Roman bridge there over the river. You can just about see the river coming down past those trees and then under under the viaduct. There would have been a, a, a Roman bridge on that line. There's now three bridges. You can see the other ones over there. Uh, the Victorian era railway bridge and then the much older, I think about 15 or 1600 bridge the, uh, the stone one there, and then the, the modern metal road bridge. Caught my life, hello cat. Um, yeah, so, so the road actually extends all the way from York, uh, and actually even further down to London, right up to Edinburgh. Um, and the, the modern road bridge is the A68, which is the modern road uh, following exactly the same course up from, uh, uh, up towards Edinburgh. 
Um, yeah, so we are 25 metres in front of the north corner tower of the fort. It stood at the rise of the road to our right. In front is the inner annex, just outside the east gate, where the bars and entertainment area were to be found. So you can imagine a bustling street here with uh, with bars, maybe a few, uh, a few, you know, you know what soldiers are like. Uh, maybe a few women hanging around in the bars, uh, some drinking going on, that sort of thing. Um, the entertainment. Uh, they clustered around the Spire Road from Deer Street, so that's the, the road I'm talking about, is Deer Street, or was called Deer Street, as it came near the fort uh, entrance in the 2nd century. Back left, we see the distance of the Black Hill settlement. You can see the Black Hill up there. Back right in the dip lies the recently discovered North Annex, so there's test houses above the river. On our left sits an arena for the picked infantry and cavalry troops of the garrison to practice military exercises, perform ceremonies, parade and hold games. The Roman road to the fourth, that is Deer Street up to Edinburgh, and its famous bridge across the river Tweed at Leaderfoot, where we are. That's the, the Leaderfoot Viaduct. Legio 20 built this fort at an ala cavalry wing from the Vocante tribe, Vocante tribe in southern France, patrolled the valley, magnificently equipped, both men and horses, as can be seen in the museum. Uh, is it a viaduct or a bridge? It's both. Um, a viaduct is a bridge and a bridge is a viaduct. All it means, um, a, a duct is a, a pathway or a, a, a way, and uh, viaduct just means um, a road. So it's, it's a roadway. Um, over a river or over something else. So there we can see if this is the uh, if this is the uh, the amphitheater here. We've got the road. This road is here. There's the uh, the viaduct, and here is the east annex and the parade ground up here and. Yeah, the southern walls, uh, east and southern walls, so we're, yeah, this is uh, looking uh, sort of south here. So again, if we see this road, this modern road going in front of us is this road here. Here's the, the amphitheatre and here is the fort, as we're showing a massive playing card kind of uh, shape with a road, a street, um, coming into it and then across a crossroads there. That would have been the the uh, the governor or the consular uh, house, the the um, the general or whoever. And when the emperor would come here, that's where he would be staying uh, in that that house there, right in the centre. And then outside that, you'd have uh, you cat, you'd have you know not the soldiers, but you'd have the hangers on, the locals who would. Um, gives provides services to the uh, to the fort. But let's walk a little bit further down again. So that's as I say, that's the most northerly uh, amphitheatre in the empire um, for a hundred years or so. Well, the the most the most northerly that we know about anyway. So I'm going to walk up to that building over there across at the fields. It's getting a little bit cool and a little bit uh, chilly. The sun's kind of down. But we'll keep going. And here you've got an example of some of the artefacts that have been found. Any hill fort in here? Absolutely. There's one on that hill. There's one on that hill. Um, you can't see any others, but yeah, definitely. Plenty. Plenty. Uh, yeah, so I was showing you the, uh, the artefacts that have been found here. These are mostly in the National Museum of Scotland. I think, yeah, all four of them are. Uh, so a, wine, a couple of wine jugs, one bronze, uh, yellow bronze and green bronze. Yep, I appreciate the great topic award, Kat. Uh, look at that mask, a face mask, hair deliberately braided curled over the ears and falling down the cheeks. Holes below for attaching to a helmet. The viaduct is impressive, yes, but that is modern engineering. That is Victorian uh, railway engineering. It's not, uh, it's not Roman. The, the Roman one would have been much smaller, much lower down uh, and wooden. 
And don't forget, a train can't go up or down hills, so you've got to take the line, uh, the, the height of the train, whereas the Romans would have been able to march down to the water and then have a smaller bridge uh, like that one, uh, rather than up, uh, up the same height. So there again is the, the amphitheatre, a couple of gladiators having a go at each other. And as I was talking about, that's the, the line of the, the road here. And then we've got the, the East Annex, the parade ground in the middle. Yeah. And that's a comparison of the, the size of the amphitheatres. Uh, that's one at Carmarthen in Wales, for example. Similar size. Similar. Uh, the Roman surface of sand and gravel is one metre below the present grassy surface. Uh, the sides of the arena would have been much higher in Roman times. There's no sign of seating, but plenty of hobnails were found in the boots, uh, from the boots of the soldiers standing all around to watch that, holding a thousand to two thousand spectators. It was a special place for ceremonies like honouring the emperor's birthday, swearing in recruits or awarding medals, and tournaments, horse dressage, sword play, animal baiting. It's unlikely there were sufficient sponsors for urban-type games, but it's been said that the Roman soldiers and their amphitheatre were in the same relationship as British soldiers and their football pitch. It was the first structure to be made after the camp fort was built, and it's expected that other such structures will be found in Scotland. Maybe. Maybe. Um, yeah, but let's walk again further down. Keep on going. So I'm doing... Um, I'm doing a, a history broadcast every day this week. Um, it's the, the, this week's challenge for the, the broadcast week is Haps History. Uh, it's showing uh, different subjects about history. And because of where I am, because of there being so much history to see here, I thought I was going to do one broadcast. I didn't want to choose one thing. I thought I would do seven, um, one each day. But I could easily have done it all month, frankly. Because there's, there's so much to see here and so much, um, yeah, so many different places, so many different people to talk about. And some say, well, you can imagine that maybe, maybe a Roman feeling, or, or uh, one of the French Legio 20, one of those soldiers, um, or even maybe somebody from uh, North Africa. stretching right the way to Algeria and Libya and across to Germany. Um, you know, so the whole of the Mediterranean uh, would be supplying people, soldiers, um, you know, and, and everybody else who would be associated with an army. They would all be coming here um, and, you know, more than likely meeting with and sharing the DNA of the, the locals. So there's been for the last 2,000 years plus, there's been a, an intermingling of, of different people and different cultures here uh, in southern Scotland. Um, I will just show you that we're going to go up towards, but not on to, the, uh, the viaduct. When is bothering like, yeah, it will be. <laughs> Nothing I can do about it, unfortunately. All right, so through the gate. And latched up again. Yes, this is part of the Melrose Paths network, by the way. And that's looking like a nice sunset. So, um, as I was saying, I'm doing one of these every day this week. We've been to Dryborough Abbey um, on Saturday. And we were at um, Harmony Hall. Um, and uh, just yes, uh, uh, yesterday, and we were at um, the the Celtic Hill Fort uh, and the, the beautiful bridge in in Elethan. Um, I don't have any microphones I can plug in at the moment. No. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm showing you um, a different different eras and different styles of history, uh, different things to uh, to be 
you know, as, a, as an example of the different uh, most interesting places. Uh, thank you, Peter. Um, so I've still got a couple more to do that I want to show you yet. Uh, and I'll also, I was also planning on going to Jadra Abbey on Saturday anyway. I um, don't know if it's the, the, uh, the hedge. What I should be doing, just like at the start of Gladiator, I should be doing that, shouldn't I? I should be doing my best Russell Crowe impression. <laughs> yeah. So, here again, we've got the, the timeline. So, 3,000, uh, sorry, 4,000 years ago, or more, that's flat, um, yeah, 4,000 years ago plus, um, we had the, the Celtic fort on top of the North Eildon, with about, say, 2,000 people living there, something like that, before it was abandoned, perhaps for whatever reason. And then Agricola came here and built Trimontium. The, uh, the fort in these fields. Sometimes you can still see, yeah, you can still see the outlines of the uh, of the fort when it gets particularly dry. Um, yeah, so and then it was they came here and went a few times up to Septimius Severus and his sons Caracalla and Geta. So he came here probably in, a, in an attempt to conquer the whole of Scotland. Um, but he failed. He got ill and he died uh, on campaign here. And uh, uh, the, the emperorship, uh, the, 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 emperor, uh, the empire was led by his two sons. Um, and it led to a really tumultuous time that you had, the, you had several emperors all in one year um, back then. The empire was kind of falling apart. It's splitting into the Western Empire and the Eastern Empire uh, by the time of, of um, Septimius Severus. Um, but what I want to show you here, they're, as early as they're gorse, uh, these bushes, what I want to show you is the fields, and you can imagine uh, the Roman army being here. If we climb up here, so if you walk along there, you get to the, the viaduct. If you walk along that way. And there's the, the two other bridges I was talking about. Um, not quite medieval, but a fairly old bridge. And then the modern A68 road bridge. So the, the Roman bridge would have been much more like that. It would have been wooden, but at that sort of level, probably. Possibly even on that exact site. Possibly. Not this way. Oh, Helen. So now, here above, we can imagine being a Roman soldier, a Roman cavalry soldier, um, posted here from France, probably. But as I say, it could be anywhere from the, the Mediterranean area. An observation tower, well. A lookout post, yeah, just for seeing, seeing the uh, seeing the, the the area of the fort, and sometimes when the when the crops aren't here usually, and when it gets dry, you can see the lines of the fort. So I don't know if maybe that might be one of the lines of the fort. Um, so you'd be looking out for a massive playing card shape in the field. It's best done from the air, you know, from a from a drone or from a, an aeroplane. And as I say, when the when the uh, the weather's been particularly dry for a while. But you can still see, even two thousand years later, you can still see the the, uh, the fort. Oh Sean. Great illustration of how even a small elevation such as a guard tower gives a great advantage. It does, yeah. So, I mean, this is only, what, we're only maybe 18 feet off the ground for something like that. Uh, five or six metres, easily within 
the capabilities of the Romans to build a guard, tire, uh, a guard tower at this, this height. And you can now see down to the bridge. Uh, you can very easily see anybody climbing the Eildon up towards the, the little signal tower at the top. Uh, this would be a very beautiful view if it wasn't for the uh, if it wasn't for the power lines. It would be a particularly nice view, but uh, even the mark two thousand years late. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, this isn't obviously this is not Roman. Um, this is not a Roman uh, structure. Not nowadays. Um, but the fort is still here. Um, the lines of the fort, and of course the influence. As I say, uh, the genes would be, you know, they were brought here those 2,000 years ago. The fort founders, yes. Um, the, the genes were, were brought here, and we, you know, we, we have, we still have the, uh, the leftovers, shall we say, of, uh, of the Romans being here. The Romans, the French, uh, the Spanish, um, uh, in, in fact, uh, Septimius Severus, he, uh, he was African, um, so he, he, you wouldn't think so, but the Roman Emperor was African. Um, it probably had uh, black ancestry. So yeah, like I say, you, you, you wouldn't necessarily think so of, uh, of um, a Roman Emperor. You would often think that it's you know, a, a direct descendant from one to another, but the Romans had the tradition of uh, adopting, uh, yeah, yeah, something like that. Um, the Romans had the, the, the tradition of adopting um, people. Uh, sometimes you would get uh, an emperor adopting somebody older than himself and becoming uh, a son who is actually older than the father. And, you know, you could adopt anyone you wanted. You could adopt a general or whoever, whoever you liked, whoever, uh, whoever you wanted to be your heir. Whoever was powerful and, and you know, thought that uh, would be good for the empire. But not just emperors, you know, any, any uh, senator or any great family could, could do that and would do that. <laughs> Who would adopt me? Mm, good question. Anyway, it's starting to get a little bit chilly. It's starting to get a wee bit cold. So um, have a look at my previous history broadcast this week. Um, uh, Saturday through to, uh, to now, and we've still got a couple more to do. I might go and show you. I might go up the uh, up Deer Street um, and show you the, this, the, the, the hospital at Sutra, um, Sutra Isle. Um, so we'll jump forward about a thousand years. I think we'll probably do that tomorrow. We'll jump forward a thousand years and show you the, uh, the hospital. That should be quite interesting. Smell and Tower open now. Uh, I went before it's still locked up. Um, check the website. Uh, the Historic Scotland website will tell you. I'm not sure. I think it's still closed. Uh, you missed that live broadcast, sadly. Well, um, yeah, yeah. Well, it's so we did that on what was it Sunday night, I think. So I was at Drybra. Um, I was at Drybra on Saturday. Then I think it was Sunday night. I went to Smailon. Then Monday, um, I forget which way around I did it, but uh, uh, Monday and Tuesday it was uh, Harmony Hall. Uh, where I spoke about uh, the the slave owner who built the uh, the hall there, um, and uh, we were at the, uh, the the Celtic Hill Fort at uh, Denolithan as well. Uh, I think that was just last night. So those four things we've done so far in the the Haps History uh, Challenge Week. Uh, like I say, tomorrow we might go up to the the hospital. The now now abandoned, but still still there, still extant uh, hospital at Sutra. And Friday, I'm not sure about yet. I have a few ideas, um, a few ideas that I might, uh, I might show you. We'll see, we'll see. I still have, I'm still choosing. What if you can do? Um, so yes, yeah, still a couple more um, history broadcasts to show you. Um, but, you know, I, I, um, I uh, didn't know about the, ha the the history challenge. Might try to get the walnuts one. Yeah, good, good idea, Sean. Um, definitely show show the the statue there um, um, of William Wallace. Very good idea. If you if you make sure you watch the uh, the weekly Q and A, 
on the, the hats account. Um, then you find out what the challenge is each week uh, and you can take part or not. Um, I think last last week it was space was the, the theme um, and this week history. There's your phone box. Yeah, yes. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed this week if I'm not too tired. Um, we'll do the phone box uh, tomorrow night, hopefully. Um, but as I say, hopefully Sutra tomorrow and then Friday. I'm not sure where I'll be. Not sure what uh, history one will do, um, but I do have a couple of good ideas for, for Friday. But I was showing you the uh, in the field. I was showing you uh, who votes. Oh, it's it's just sort of suggested, and then it's picked by you know the the viewers whoever whoever's watching that that weekly broadcast. They just sort of kind of come to a decision along with Peter and Pablo. About uh, about what's going to happen, but I was I was saying this, you know, two thousand nine, well, nineteen hundred years ago, this was a, a bustling fort, um, full of horses, full of um, it's just suggestive fierce competition. Well, I don't know about fierce competition. I don't know if it's a competition exactly. It's just a a good suggestion for the history. Um, you would have all the the noise of. A few thousand soldiers, um, but it was also a, it was kind of a little village. There would be um, there would be bakers and ironmongers. So you'd have you know the furnaces burning. You'd have a, a blacksmith, lots of several blacksmiths uh, making horseshoes and nails. Uh, you'd have armorers uh, making swords and arrows. Um, you would have, you know, washerwomen, um, you know, a, a small village um, of a fort here. As I say, very bustling and uh, still going, okay, uh, I'll end soon. But you can imagine that here, 1900 years ago, imagine what the locals would have thought of it. Uh, if you were one of the locals who were living on the, the Black Hill over there, this invading army speaking strange languages with strange customs and strange religions. It was a vicious um, by the fort to a village uh, with the walls. Yes, exactly. So just uh, as, as was shown on the um, on the, the panel over there, there'd be a small village outside the main fort. So you'd have the uh, the Romans would have built their fort with the walls and the, the, the streets within it. And then, yeah, as you say, Keith, a, a vicious um, just outside um, yeah, a village, essentially, just outside the, the fort. Um, but can you imagine that as a, as a, a Votadini tribesman? Imagine the invading Romans speaking Latin, worshipping Mars rather than uh, the river. Um, yeah, just imagine the, imagine the culture shock something utterly, utterly unknown, you'd never experienced before, never imagined anything like that before, never heard of any of this. Yeah, indigenous people going back several thousand years before the Romans came, so they would only know themselves, really. There might have been some trade with uh, some of the, you know, the other Celtic people in France, um, in northern Spain, um, or across into Norway, but the Romans were just a totally different proposition entirely. Um, yeah, it's not it's not a competition, you know. It's it's just an example of a suggestion of a theme to do, and people can uh, can do that or not. Uh, do you think some Romans were practicing Celtic religions eventually? Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, the the Romans they. Um, they very much mixed their religion with the local religion. Um, so here it was an animist religion, as, as I've said before, worshipping the, the land, the trees, the rivers, the animals, and so on. And the, the Romans would take a lot of that and they would reuse it, they'd recycle it. Um, and uh, after that, after the Romans as well. Um, so you would have the local gods and they would be... Uh, the Romans would come and they would speak to the, the locals and they'd say, oh, your god of the river or uh, your god of the sea, well, that's just like our Pluto 
You see, your 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 sea god that you think of, well, that's just Pluto. That's our god as well. So they would often do that. Uh, and then afterwards, when the Romans were uh, had gone, you had the Christians coming here, and they would say, "Oh, your your um, your Saturnalia." That's Christmas. So you celebrate that in, in December when the, the sun's going down and you're hoping it's going to come back. Well, that's what Christmas is as well. So you had this, this continuation of, of ancient prehistoric religions through, um, through the, the, the pantheistic religions of Rome and into monotheism um, of Christianity. Um, yeah, recycling, exactly. So it's got to be under, Underworld. Uh, yes. Um, Sorry, it's Neptune. Neptune is, uh, yeah, wrong planet. <laughs> Neptune is the uh, the god of, of the sea, of course. Um, but yeah, same principle, of course. Um, or you'd have, uh, you know, in Egypt, you'd have Ra, uh, the, the sun god, and so on, um, or Apollo. Um, so yeah, very much using the 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 the, the religions and. Uh, exploiting similarities and then persuading people. So it wasn't all about conquering, it's hearts and minds, as you say. Here comes somebody uh, up to the, the fort. Um, yeah, very interesting, the, not the, the tactics that the, the Romans used, I think. Uh, good afternoon, the mad. But I think we'll stop here anyway, because it's starting to get a little bit cold. I'm just in shorts and my t-shirt, so I want to um, disappear and go and get warm. Uh, what god is Earth? Um, Gaia, was it? Uh, was it? Oh, anyway, anyway, anyway. So, like I say, hopefully tomorrow up at Sutra and Friday we'll see where I want to be, uh, what I want to show you on Friday. And have a look back at not just my history ones, but check the, the HAPS history hashtag for other history broadcasts here on HAPS this week. But thank you for watching. Uh, no, hoodie, no hoodie today, no, because it's sunny and warm. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for the awards. Thanks for asking your questions and engaging. Um, you know, it's always good to have um, interactive broadcasts. Um, uh, tomorrow afternoon, we should be at the coffee shop uh, reading Moby Dick, by the way. Uh, another nice historical novel. And um, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow and uh, for hopefully Sutra and then Friday. Thanks for being here. See you next time, everybody. Uh, have a nice Wednesday evening.